Today we're going to talk about labdanum, which is in my opinion one of the most important raw materials in perfumery. In this video I share my search for the best labdanum that I could find, and I'm also going to let you guys know how you can get some too, so stick around. But firstly, what is labdanum? Labdanum is a term for the resin of a plant called Cystus landiferus, or the rock rose. Um, and this is found in countries surrounding the Mediterranean Sea. Um, most of it's produced in Spain for use in perfumery, but some is also produced in other countries like Cyprus. Labdanum has been used for a very long time in perfumery, with records dating back as far as 5 BC. Apparently the Arabs originally collected labdanum by combing it off the beards of goats which had been rustling around in the cistus bushes. Um, later on they started to draw big long strips of leather through the bushes in order to collect all of the kind of the resin that had been exuded out. Um, and once they collected those on the strips, then they could take it off and use that in something like a perfume. Now, there are lots of different ways of preparing labdanum, but in this video I'm going to talk about probably the most common method for perfumery, which is making an absolute. So what's done in this case is the resin of the labdanum is washed as such to take out any extra bits of plant stems or organic matter. And then after all the excess water is removed, it's actually extracted with alcohol in order to produce something called an absolute. And this is actually the raw material that you can buy that you would use in perfumery. The main reason that labdanum is so important in perfumery is it's a fundamental component of what's called an amber accord. Um, basically you mix some labdanum with some vanillin and also some benzoin if you want as well, and you get this really nice sweet honey-like smelling accord that's used in all different types of perfumes. It's not only amber cords that you can use labdanum in though, actually it blends really well with a lot of things, and part of the reason for that is that it smells so nice on its own to begin with. Um, it's been written that it blends well with musks, iron-ones, other woody materials, and things like bergamot, though I recommend you try blending it with other things yourself, because I think blending is always something a bit subjective, so you're going to work out for you what you can blend it with if you just try different things. But it's definitely easy to use, unlike some other raw materials in perfumery which are only good in specific situations, I think labdanum is one that can really be used all over the place. And for those of you who are at the stage where you're making your own perfumes, labdanum is commonly used at levels between 0.1 and 1% of the final formula. Just for reference, doesn't mean you have to stick within those limits. And finally, what does labdanum smell like? Well to me, it's got two sides to it. Firstly, there's this really sweet, kind of honey-like side, but then it's also got these kind of darker, uh, leathery, tobacco kind of undertones, and these all blend together to make this really nice amber scent. So anyway then, why am I making a video about comparing different types of labdanum? Well, the thing about raw materials, and especially naturals and perfumery, is that they really can vary depending on things like the manufacturer, the harvest time, the crop. One especially important element to this is that when raw materials are not so good, when you don't have the best, they can also have these off notes in them as well. And there's a real issue with having these bad quality raw materials in your perfume because if one of your raw materials has an off notes and you put it in the perfume, it's not very easy to mask that with something else because when you're making perfumes, you're adding things together. But it's very rare that you can add something which will suddenly completely block out something else. What normally happens is you add something else and it just shouts louder, you just smell both things together. So if you want to avoid off notes in your perfumes, what you really have to do is make sure you use high quality raw materials to begin with so they never get introduced in the first place. Anyway, let me take you through my experience with labdanum since I first started in perfumery. So when I first started with perfumery, all I really had was a lot of really cheap essential oils. And most of these smelled quite medicinal, quite bad, but labdanum was one of the few things which actually smelled really, really nice, even though it wasn't the best quality or anything. So because of this, labdanum quickly became one of my favorite raw materials in perfumery. Anyway, as I developed more as a perfumer and I was starting to get exposed to better quality raw materials for other naturals, slowly over time I started to notice that there are actually off notes in the labdanum that I had which I hadn't noticed before. Remember, it was still quite a cheap low quality labdanum that I bought, it just still smelled fairly nice on the face of it. Now, these off notes really started to show through, especially when it went on the skin. Um, especially before, I'd been testing some of the blends out a bit more on things like scent strips, but when I moved onto the skin, uh, these off notes really came through a bit more. And the problem with that was, I would be making a perfume and sometimes I'd have these off notes in it and I would be trying to work out what it is. And eventually I realized that in some cases it was the labdanum that was causing the issue. Even though the labdanum was also bringing this really nice labdanum smell to the perfume, I realized that the quality of labdanum that I had wasn't the best, so I needed to make sure I did something about that. 
Now, if you've seen my other video on labdenum, you'll see that in the past I had two different samples of labdenum. One was from Mystic Moments, which is quite a cheap, not usually the best quality supplier. And the other one was from Hermitage Oils, who are very high quality, but they're expensive and they don't always provide the safety documentation, which makes it difficult if like me, you have a perfume company, so you're trying to actually sell the perfumes as opposed to just use them on your own skin. Since about six months ago, I've actually been working on a perfume, which is not quite ready to release yet, but in that perfume, I actually make quite heavy use of labdanum. When I was developing that perfume, I had to use my Hermitage oil sample because the Mystic Moments one I had wasn't good enough quality for me to properly be able to kind of make the perfume as good as it could be because, again, it had these kind of off notes and things in it. Since developing this formula, I've also been trying to get new samples of labdanum from various different suppliers, and I've been comparing those both in the formula in a real perfume I'm making, but also on their own to really drill down to work out what is the best labdanum absolute that I can find. This is really important, of course, because when I release this new perfume, in order to make sure it smells as good as possible, I need to make sure that the raw materials I'm using, um, and especially the labdanum in this case, are of the highest possible quality, um, so they smell the best that they can, don't have these off notes, that kind of thing. So anyway, now I'm going to show you guys the final three contenders that I came up with, which are behind me, and I'm also going to compare those with the original Mystic Moment sample and explain why these are better than that original sample I had, what the differences are in quality between them, and let you know what I think is the best. So anyway, we're going to start off with the Mystic Moments labdanum that I had. Now the first thing that you notice about this sample is that it's actually a much darker brown than all the other samples. And what that signals to me is actually a bit of low quality manufacturing going on. What it signals to me is a bit less care um, actually happening in the manufacturing process, maybe some cost cutting or cutting corners, that kind of thing. What it suggests is that there's actually still some plant matter left inside that was taken through with the extraction um, because it's those kind of colorings in the plant that are naturally found that haven't been properly washed out so they must have stayed and they're still there in the absolute. The thing with labdanum is it is a colored raw material it's always going to have this kind of yellowy browny tinge to it but in this case uh, with this Mystic Moments one it's really really extreme so what that means for you is if you put it in a perfume it's really going to make that perfume dark which in some cases is fine but sometimes you don't want your perfume to be really dark um, so this is going to be maybe a little issue. Anyway, what does it smell like? Well, it does still smell nice. It definitely does smell nice. It's still got that sweet honey note in it, no doubt about it. But you do notice this kind of cardboardy off note as well. It's something you wouldn't necessarily notice when you buy it for the first time, especially if you've never smelled one of the higher quality labdanums. But when you've smelled more of these labdanums, you really start to notice uh, the off notes, I think, a little bit more. Now, the other thing about this is it's really strong. It's really powerful. Um, and you would think, yes, maybe that's a good thing but it's almost as if it's strong in the sense that it's not only the labdanum but it's that off note is strong as well. Overall when I was starting out in perfumery a quality of labdanum like this still did smell good to me but that said nowadays I would never buy something like this again um, and I would not recommend that you buy something like this even though it's cheap uh, just because why not buy the right thing the first time you're still gonna be wasting less money if you think about it. But that said, moving on to the other ones. So what I've got here is samples from three different manufacturers. And all of these are quite well regarded manufacturers. They've got very good reputations in the perfume industry. Um, so they're not just random people distilling this labdanum. They've all got decent names attached to them. So you know from the beginning that they're probably going to be quite good quality. So the samples I've got are one from Albert Vie, one from Payne Bertrand, and one from a company called Ultra International. So now I'm gonna go through and let you know what I think of these different samples. So firstly, we have the one from Albert Vie, um, and in this case, it's actually called Labdanum Decolorized, which suggests to me they try to do some kind of decolorization process. As I said, Labdanum always does have a slight yellowy color, so I guess they tried to make it a bit less colorized, um, but it doesn't seem like it really significantly is less colorized than any of the other Labdanums I have and it's always hard to decolorize something without pulling the smell with it, and I'm sure they were kind of careful not to do that too much either. Anyway, so what does it smell like? Well, it definitely doesn't smell as strong as the other one, but it definitely smells a lot more refined. Actually, this sample is really, really nice. It's still got that kind of sweetness to it, but you can really smell those warm, kind of leathery, more tobacco undertones coming out, coming through, um, and this is something you couldn't really smell so much in the low quality one. The other thing about this is I know for a fact when you leave this over time 
the actual smell holds together a lot better. It smells nice for a lot longer time. Whereas with the lower quality ones, it smells quite good at the start, but it quickly kind of drops off after a few hours and then the, the bad side of it comes through a little bit more. Something like this is really nice and well-rounded. Um, and I think this is a really, really nice quality labdanum. If you have the opportunity to buy the Albervier labdanum, I would definitely recommend it based on this experience because again, I do think this is really, really nice. The next one is the Payen Bertrand labdanum. Now this one I was expecting really big things of because again, Payen Bertrand are a really well-respected manufacturer. But when I smelled this, I have to say it wasn't as good as the Albert Vier. The thing about the Payen Bertrand one is I did still detect, unfortunately, just a little bit of that kind of car body, in this case, off note. It was quite subtle and you could still smell overall that the labdanum was of good quality, but at the same time, with these certain manufacturers, you're paying a lot more than your standard kind of rates for the cheap labdanums that you can find in other stores. So you really wanna be making sure you're getting the best thing for your money. And in this case, I did feel like the labdanum wasn't quite as good as it could have been. I think this batch came from 2018 or 2019. So maybe part of it was also the fact that it had been sitting on the shelf for a few years. That's always possible, um, but I have to say, this labdanum was, again, really nice. I still would definitely rather use this over the Mystic Moments one I had, but I would say compared to the Albert VA, I would definitely still buy the Albert VA. Finally, I have the Ultra International sample. Now, this sample was not actually something I meant to run into, but I somehow accidentally stumbled into it, and I have to say I'm really, really impressed by this. Now, the reason I like this sample so much is it's got all of those rich, kind of complex tobacco undertones, just like in the Albert Vie sample. But I also think that the sweetness and that honey-like sweetness in the opening really pops a lot more with this. I really think that this sample, again, is just a little bit more powerful. Maybe that was because of the decolorization in the Albert Vie. Um, could have also been taking some of the scent away with it. Um, but I really feel like this is just a little bit stronger, but it's also kept all of that level of quality. Um, and at the same time, this also lasts a really long time as well. Again, the other really important thing with this is it doesn't have those off notes like in the Mystic Moments or that Pay and Bertrand sample I had. So for me, given that that is probably the most important factor, it definitely comes down to a decision between this one and the Albert Vie. Now, I have to say there really wasn't too much between those samples. So if you have the opportunity to buy either that, something by Ultra International or something by Albert Vie for Labdanum Absolute, I would definitely recommend you go for either of those options. However, that said, me making the choice for my new perfume, I had to make a decision, and the decision that I actually ended up going for was the Ultra International. So the first reason was this sample from Ultra International is actually really, really nice and fresh. I know for a fact that I actually had to wait for my sample, um, my test sample, to come from the manufacturer because they were just finishing off all the production from this year. And what that means is when I receive my full order, it's also gonna be fresh from the extraction, which means that the shelf life is gonna be a lot longer than something that has been maybe sitting around for a year or two in some warehouse. When you compare the smells between the two, they're actually really similar. I found that neither of them had an off note. The actual smell of both samples was very, very close. They lasted pretty much about the same time. I did think that the sweetness was a bit better in the Ultra International sample. And I also found that the color was pretty much the same. Even though the Albert Vie was meant to be decolorized, I found in practice, they both left the same color on the scent strip and the actual solution was also the same color. So I can't really see any differences that it would give to the color of the final perfume. The final thing was it actually ended up in the end being slightly cheaper to buy the Ultra International sample, which I thought was obviously then the choice because if it's slightly better, but it's also slightly cheaper, then it's definitely the way to go. So anyway, now I've got this on order because this is the one I've chosen to be used in my new perfume. Um, so what I've done is I've ordered it in bulk. Basically the way it works with all of these suppliers, especially these uh, higher quality manufacturers, is often they won't sell things at consumer kind of levels. They won't sell you test 10 milliliters. Um, I actually had to go and buy a whole kilogram of this because that, believe it or not, is their minimum order quantity. So I'm gonna have a kilogram of this labdanum in stock. Some of that's gonna be used for my perfume and I'm also gonna be using it in blends and other things, other perfumes as well potentially. But I also wanted to make it available to you guys in case there's any of you guys in the UK 
who wanted to try some of this stuff for yourself. So I'm also going to add it to my web store. Um, if anyone's interested in that, you wanna pick up some of this labdanum, um, definitely go check out. I'll put a link in the description um, and you can pick it up. I don't know if you can buy this anywhere else. I haven't seen it for sale anywhere else apart from in these kilogram quantities. Um, so if you're interested in it, you can pick it up on the web store. That said, if you see the Albert VA labdanum anywhere, I would also recommend that as an alternative because I think both of those samples were really good in the end. Um, and I think either of those two you could use and they would be perfect if you wanna use labdanum in your perfumery. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you learned something in this video about labdanum or about material sourcing. Do let me know in the comments if you've tried labdanum yourself and what you think of it. I know for me, it's certainly one of the best raw materials in perfumery. Um, if you haven't tried it, I really would recommend you get some, regardless of which supplier you decide to get it from. Um, I think it's really important for things like Amber Accords. But yeah, anyway, have a good week and I'll see you next time with some fresh content. Until then.